The new wave of research in health and fitness unlocks a new area called metabolic flexibility. This should be the most effective way to diet to get all the benefits we want. Biohackers are more keen on becoming metabolically flexible and more keto and fasting books are written by the day. But what is metabolic flexibility? Imagine waking up at 7, having 4 carbohydrate loaded meals with insufficient protein and fats. This is what your glucose does. It fluctuates. You enjoy your carb loaded meal, the brain gets acute pleasure, your blood sugar increases, making you sleepy. The problem is, the body signals low battery mode very fast. We need to refuel and eat again every 2-3 to three hours or there is no energy. On the other hand, if you allow your body to tap into fat for fuel by eating more fats and less carbohydrates, numerous benefits like improved cognition, fat loss and sustainable energy shall occur. So what is metabolic flexibility exactly? Metabolic flexibility is the ability to switch between sources of fuel. Primarily, when talking about metabolic flexibility, we talk about the ability to shift towards using fats or ketones instead of carbs or glucose. Now, why do you want that? See, our bodies primarily run on glucose. It's faster, cheaper, more effective way to get energy quicker. It's also more pleasurable. But when we deprive ourselves of glucose, the body can tap into fat stores burning fat for energy. And this comes with a myriad of different health benefits, specifically targeting the ability to produce more ATP or more energy, which is linked to anti-aging and longevity. To understand this, we need to take a glimpse at what is metabolism and metabolic health at all. Metabolism is the way our body produces energy using calories, oxygen and water. Metabolic health refers to the optimal ratio of numerous metabolic markers and the efficiency of producing energy. Such metabolic markers include insulin sensitivity, blood glucose levels, lipid profile and glycemic variability. Being metabolically flexible basically allows you to shorten the gap between the jump from carbs to fats because metabolically inflexible people would have a hard time switching between these sources continually running on carbs. The end result is a drop in glucose and energy levels. Although keto is one of the most effective ways to stimulate metabolic flexibility, there are other, more sustainable diet tweaks like fasting or ketogenic breakfast or MCT oil added to your coffee that can do the trick for us. What is the problem with a carb-centric diet? See, most of us are used to running on glucose all the time. The problem with this is we need to refeed constantly. So the amount and frequency of sugar consumption is very constant, consistent, which increases the secretion of insulin and with that potentially taxes our system and our pancreas. This leads to metabolic deficit or the inability to create enough energy. By doing so continuously, we never teach our bodies how to tap into fat stores for energy and how to burn fat to produce ATP. This in time leads to insulin resistance, increasing inflammation, oxidative stress and directing us toward a metabolic syndrome type of diseases. It's no shock to see obesity rates on the rise when we take into consideration that our ancestors ate just about 10% of the sugars we do today. This makes us less functional in producing energy and ATP, which I like to call metabolic deficit, the staple for metabolic syndrome, abnormalities and weight gain. And more frequent our consumption of glucose, the more we move toward metabolic inflexibility. Research suggests that individuals with obesity or type 2 diabetes manifested impaired metabolic flexibility compared with their lean and healthy counterparts. Such results prompted the notion that impaired metabolic flexibility could lead to insulin resistance and metabolic alterations. A quick physiology explanation. So insulin is the key regulating hormone for blood glucose. When we ingest carbohydrate, insulin increases in parallel to it so that we can transport that glucose into cells and use it for energy. 
but constant ingestion of high amounts of carbohydrates leads to a constant elevation of insulin, which is known to lead to insulin resistance or insulin insensitivity. When this happens, we are again inefficient to create energy, we tax our pancreas, and insulin cannot recognize sugars that well. On the other hand, when we fast or we eat more fats and less carbs, or we eat carbs less frequently, so just what happens into fasting, we tend to put the body in a glucose-deprived state. In such state, the body taps into using fats or ketones for fuel, which comes with myriad of different effects and benefits. First of all, your pancreas takes a rest, so insulin sensitivity resets. Then, inflammation and DNA damage can be reduced. This potentially leads to a lower cardiometabolic risk, due to more stable sugar levels and lower elevation of insulin. Humans have the capacity for metabolic flexibility as ketogenesis kicks in once glucose is depleted. Studies show nutritional ketosis improves metabolic and inflammatory factors, insulin sensitivity and lipid profile. The body doesn't understand the difference between fasting and keto diet. Once in a state of ketosis, we facilitate metabolic flexibility. This is important as many get scared they'd have to shift to keto completely. No. Keto in most cases is a reset diet, not a sustainable way to live for most. But going on and off ketosis is what improves metabolic flexibility and keto or keto mimicking diets are the fastest way to bridge this gap. Primarily, metabolic flexibility is gained by reducing the frequency and amount of sugars or carbohydrate consumption. We can do that with fasting, as we reduce the window in which we eat glucose, so for an extended period of time, our body taps into what I like to call semi-ketosis. Caloric restriction is also a viable thing because it helps you burn fat. Next thing is being in ketosis is probably the most effective and efficient way to tap into metabolic flexibility, but if that's not an option due to your life circumstances, maybe having a ketogenic breakfast with fasting is going to do the trick, extending us a little bit further into ketosis every day. Next thing is exogenous ketones, which you can add into your coffee uh, when you're fasting or on a ketogenic diet as an additional boost. Things like caffeine, exercising regularly, carb cycling, so being on and off carbohydrates extends us into ketosis and directs us towards the benefits of being metabolically flexible. So training your metabolism to use fat for fuel instead of glucose can come with a myriad of potential health benefits. But if you're interested to go a little bit deeper and check out these research and references for yourself, make sure you check out the article we've written on vitalsend.com, link in the description below. So research on fasting, keto or low carb high fat shows the potential benefits are stable energy levels, improved body composition increased insulin sensitivity, faster fat loss and weight loss, more optimal lipid profile, less inflammation and greater mitochondrial function, slower rates of aging, lower risk of metabolic syndrome, greater cognitive function, and all of this sort of leads to aging slower and regenerating better. A few tips to improve metabolic flexibility. So as we've said, having a ketogenic breakfast can help us extend that fasting into ketosis. This is a very good tip for someone who's not willing to push into ketosis, but likes to gain most of the benefits of metabolic flexibility. Another one is MCT or medium chain triglyceride oil added into coffee, of course, during fasting which as an exogenous ketone helps you sort of shift into ketosis faster and get all the MF benefits. Next is what I like to call the MF plate, which is just more fat and less carbohydrates and sugars on your plate. Try to shift your meals in a way that contains a little bit less of the carbohydrate starchy, kind of sugary type of things and more in the protein and fat side. Next one is glucose tracking. By investing in a glucose tracker, it's like a patch that you put on your arm and you can follow your glucose levels throughout the day. You can see how the habits you did and how your diet affected your blood glucose levels. 
So what do I do currently? Well, I do about 16 hours of fasting. So I eat my first meal at about one o'clock and my last at about nine o'clock. That's the first thing. The second one is collagen butter coffee. So when I'm having my first meal of the day, I'm having a few pieces of dark chocolate, a little bit of butter or MCT oil along with collagen with my coffee. You can call it bulletproof coffee, although I am trying different types of coffees. But my four major ingredients is dark chocolate, coffee, collagen and butter or MCT oil. Next thing is again the MF plate or the more fat, less carbohydrates type of uh, meal. So just one example is instead of eating a large bowl of pasta, I've now greatly reduced the amount of pasta by about 50% eating only chickpea, whole grain or spinach or lentils type of pasta, which has less simple sugars than the regular uh, one made with flour. So less volume, more complex carbohydrates. And on top of that, I add avocado and three eggs and I mix it all together. So it's more fat, more protein, less carbohydrates. And that's all I have for you today. Have a nice one. And I hope this helps you on a path to becoming more metabolically flexible.